Okay, good morning from Dade Battlefield State Park in uh, Central Florida. I've got the TR-45 set up here for, for a very quick activation using the simplest, most basic antenna that I've probably ever used from a park. It's just a random wire, 17 feet long, going up to that tree branch. And another 17 foot piece of wire laid on the ground. That's a quarter wavelength on 20 meters. I'm using the internal battery in the TR-45L and I'm feeding the um, antenna via the uh, balanced port here. And I've got it tuned. It tuned up quite easily here on the 20 meters. I just worked KQ2RP Portable 1 in Maine. He's QRP and uh, he was about 559 here. The main reason for this activation is I want to show the functionality of the internal keyer and also of the notch filter. So I'm only going to be on 20 meters with this antenna. We'll see how it works. Um, let me call CQ, see if I can work someone on the air, and then I'll get to those functions. Whiskey Bravo 2, Mike, Quebec, Quebec. New York. Okay, let me take a few minutes here to show you uh, what I think is a vast improvement here in how memories or how CW is stored into the memories. Like the TR-35, I've got two memories available and they are accessed with either the uh, DIT paddle or the DAW paddle, both for recording them in or playing them out. Um, and the improvement is that before with a lot of keyers like this built into the TR-45 or 35 or the TIC keyers that uh, used to be built into radios, they were very picky about how you keyed in a memory, uh, how you keyed in the characters. If, you, if your spacing was off a little bit, it would misinterpret two letters and make them two different letters that they weren't supposed to be on playback. Um, you had to be absolutely perfect with your spacing, keying them in to get them to playback properly. And that has been rendered largely uh, as no longer the case here in the TR-45L. I'm going to key in a memory. As you can see, I've already got one keyed in, but I'm going to start over. Let me just clear that memory out right now so you know there's a brand new one in there. Okay, now keyed into the dip paddle is the memory, or into the dip memory is the letter V. And that's it. But I'm going to record CQ. I'm going to call CQ, 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 POTA, then the letters DE, and then my call sign once, and then the letter K. But I'm going to key it in as if I'm very uncertain with how to send CW. I'm going to exaggerate the spacing between the, uh, the words. And I'm going to ex exaggerate it greatly, and then we're going to see how it plays it back. So let me go ahead and key that memory in now. Long space. Poda. Another long space. Long space. K for over. All right, now let's see how that plays back over the air. If the long spaces are still there or if they've been corrected. been corrected. So it's very forgiving.
I've got the writ enabled. I've got the dial lock on. With the writ off, I can't accidentally bump the VFO dial and QSY. But I can turn on the writ and adjust for whoever may answer my CQ. If uh, somebody's a little off pitch from the way I like to hear them, I can adjust for that without changing my transmit frequency. And in a minute, I'll show you the, the notch filter. As you can see, I've got the park entirely to myself this morning. And the next time I come here, this place may look very, very different. All those tall trees may not be there. Some may be down on the ground. Right, let me uh, call CQ again. If I don't get an answer, I'll spot myself on the POTA website. Whiskey Charlie 1, November. Okay, I want to find someone with whom I can demonstrate the notch filter. So let me tune around a bit here. And there's nothing on 20. Okay, I can't transmit with this antenna on 40, but let's just take a listen. Show you a little bit about the tuning. I'm in the 100 hertz digit right now. A quick press puts me in the 10 hertz digit. Another quick press puts me back in the 100. But if I long press, I can be in the kilohertz. Or another long press, I go to the single hertz digit. But the most common are the, the 10 and the 100. I can get around the band quickly with the 100 and uh, easily tune to stations in the 10. So those are the ones I use mostly. And I think that's why they're programmed to be short presses. Boy, there's nobody on. All right, let me tune for a peak. That's better. That's just about receiving. Gone.
The notch, um, according to my measurement that I made at home, uh, takes the offending signal down 12 to 15 dB, depending on band and frequency of the So that's one way to mitigate interference. And there's also the audio filter over here, which has the effect of, uh, I'll show you. To my ear, it increases the signal to noise ratio. Okay, so that's the uh, memory keyer and the notch filter now demonstrated. Let me go back to 20. I'm going to have to retune the antenna. Let me do that on camera by receive. Let me go back to the frequency I wanted to be on, which is 61. I'll go ahead and lock that in and tune for um, maximum receiver noise. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. Okay, I think we're close there. Let me turn the power down a little bit, go to reverse, and then I'll touch it up while I transmit. We were pretty close. If I go too high with my reflected power, you see I get the warning light on. Okay, there we go. Go back to full power. And I'll call CQ. That's Whiskey Mike for Quebec. And as you can see, I switched to 30 meters. Three three nine from Tennessee. I didn't think the antenna would tune on 30, but as you can see, my reflected power is almost nothing. And uh, effectively, I'm using a 20 meter quarter wave vertical, but on 30 meters. Tennessee. Okay, I guess that's about it. I've got my tent contacts um, on both 20 and 30 meters, and uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. So I'll see you next time, 73, and thanks for watching.